ビデオ Let me preface this video by saying that I wouldn't exactly call myself a fan of wrestling per se. Oh, I mean, I know of wrestling, I know wrestlers, I know the history of wrestling with things like the Montreal Screwjob and the Streak and the Shockmaster and the Undertaker throwing mankind off of the Hell in the Cell into the announcer's table as God is my witness he is broken in half. But this is all knowledge I have gained either through documentaries, botchamania, marathons, and just plain osmosis from some of my favorite YouTubers who are actual wrestling fans. I don't bother keeping up with most of the wrestling news, and I don't really watch matches all that much, so it would be wrong of me to call myself a wrestling fan. If anything, I am more of a casual outside observer. I'm saying all of this because I don't want to come off as an authority of wrestling here. If you want that, go look at OSW reviews or even Super Eyepatch Wolf. What I am an authority on is old anime, and I can tell you a lot about how pro wrestling connects to that. Professional wrestling in Japan began right in the midst of the post-war era. While there were some attempts to export the Americanized version of the sport to the country, it really wouldn't take until the early 50s with the advent of a popular local wrestler named Riki Dozen. A Korean-Japanese wrestler who had been forced out of a sumo career through racial prejudice, Riki Dozen wowed crowds by how effortlessly he would defeat American opponents. Since Japan was heavily demoralized after a devastating defeat in World War II, he quickly became a hero to many. This is what led Riki Dozen to become known as the father of Japanese professional wrestling, or as it's known in its native tongue, Pulo Lesu. In the succeeding decades, many other wrestlers would follow in Riki Dozen's footsteps, Antonio Inoki, Giant Baba, Satoru Sayama, Jushin Liger, and many more. And in doing so, they would allow Japanese pro wrestling to evolve into something different than its American counterparts. While American wrestling is still steeped in the carny tradition by which it originated from by being more focused on gimmicks, Japanese pro wrestling treats the performance more like an actual martial art, being treated as a legitimate fight with emphasis on athleticism and fighting spirit. This in turn influenced a lot of manga and anime. Not only does there exist dedicated wrestling anime like Tiger Mask and Kanikuman, but wrestling in turn has influenced entire subgenres of the medium. We can credit the popular battle shonen genre and their focus on fights between larger than life personalities on Japanese pro wrestling. Another difference between American and Japanese pro wrestling is that Japan has a far more established base of female pro wrestling, or Joshi Pro Lesu. Women's wrestling in Japan got its start in the 70s with the establishment of the All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling Stable. It was there where it would have the sport's first breakout female stars, Jackie Sato and Maki Inoue, the duo who formed the tag team unit, The Beauty Pair. It was the beauty pair's success that ushered forth a golden age of women's wrestling in Japan during the 80s, which features stars such as Jaguar Yokoda, Lioness Asuka, Cutie Suzuki, Dynamite Kansai, and others. Women's wrestling has also had an impact in the world of anime, but in a very limited capacity compared to the realm of men. Its influence is mostly just restricted to character designs, and the anime devoted solely to women's wrestling tend to be very niche and very rare. Even during the Golden Age, the idea of an anime devoted to women's wrestling was strangely scarce, but, at the very least, it was not non-existent. Miki Morita and Eri Kazama are two wrestlers who form the tag team known as the Wannabes. After witnessing their fellow tag team stable, the Dream Girls get the ever-living snot beat out of them by the tag team heel champions, the Foxy Ladies. The coach decides that the Wannabes need their training regimen upped so that they can stand a chance against the Foxy Ladies' brutal fighting style, dirty tricks, and worst of all, poor sportsmanship. <laughs> With the financial backing of the mysterious Kido Corporation, the two ladies are outfitted with some extremely expensive and state-of-the-art training equipment. Miki and Eri are a little wary of this, but against monsters like the Foxies, they'll take any help they can get. 
will this brand new training regimen be enough to take on such a gruesome twosome, or will the wannabes find themselves completely outmatched in the big match? Wannabes is one of those 80s anime that, when you first hear about it, you wonder why it isn't given more discussion. Not because it's a hidden gem or anything, by all accounts it completely bombed in sales. Japan numbers are unknown, but according to former Central Park Media employees, the rights were purchased for cheap in 93 and had such lousy sales that there was no attempt to produce a dub, and the distribution rights were unceremoniously allowed to expire with no one to rescue it. It really has more to do with it being a kinda sorta sister anime to the legendary OVA series Bubblegum Crisis. Like Golf Force, which was produced in tandem with Wannabes, it shares a lot of staff from that anime, being a joint production between AIC and Artmic after all. Animators like Atsuko Yoshida and Satoshi Irushihara worked as key animators on Wannabes. The original creator of Bubblegum Crisis, Toshimichi Suzuki, wrote the screenplay to Wannabes. But most importantly, to me anyways, Wannabes is one of the first character designing credits of your friend of mine, Kenichi Sonoda. I am not afraid in saying that it was his involvement that got me interested in seeking out this OVA in the first place. Still, there's got to be more to this anime than just being an expanded footnote in the careers of multiple creatives. So for this video, I'm going to try to pin down whether or not Wannabes is worth seeking out. Is it a stone cold stunner of an anime? Or is it just going to leave you cold and a bit stunned at its awfulness? At first glance, Wannabes does appear to be your typical mid-tier budget title. For the most part, very functional animation-wise, but also not afraid to pad out the runtime with the old bag of tricks. Most of the first act is a training montage done entirely in panning stills, after all. However, it's a huge relief to know that the team making this anime knew what they were making and devoted all the time and money to animating where it mattered the most. The wrestling matches. For this anime's budget, this is some solid fight choreography. The animation is a complete study on human wrestling maneuvers. Every technique is given the right amount of care and detail to make you believe that you are watching an actual match. I don't know for certain who animated these scenes, but my guess would be a combination of Atsuko Ashida and Satoshi Urushihara. Ashida's specialty is smooth, seamless character animation, while Urushihara really liked to employ detailed naturalism in his animation. The combination of both of these skills lend well to the theory that these two are behind scenes like this. The also matches can also be credited to Wannabe's excellent boarding, courtesy of Hiroki Hayashi, Junichi Yokoyama, and the director Yasuo Hasegawa. These three men know how to pace the action of the matches and make them feel dynamic, knowing exactly how to emphasize the drama, the tension, and the soul of the sports. It even extends to outside the ring, where they choose to get a little creative in how they can transition from one scene to another. But of course, you know I have to spend this section talking about Kenichi Sonoda and his contributions. It's incredible Sonoda was really able to nail his strengths as an artist down almost immediately in his first couple of projects. Everyone looks unique and has at least one noticeable quirk to their designs that they immediately stick out. Even if a character has only one scene. Even if a character isn't given a name. Even if they are just faces in a crowd shot, Sonoda will always give them a recognizable design. Even if you aren't a wrestling fan, this anime is almost worth checking out for the amount of 80s fashion that Sonoda gives his characters, just to have them be all the more memorable. Though I do have to comment on the designs of our two main characters. The designs of Miki and Eri are top notch, but I have the strangest feeling that Sonoda was thinking about a certain other duo that was also inspired by the beauty pair in design. You know, a certain pair of angels that are known to be quite lovely. What Wannabes does the best is just being a wrestling anime. The goal this anime has is to tell your typical underdog sports anime story in 45 minutes, with the sport in question being women's wrestling. If you have even a surface level knowledge of Japanese women's wrestling in the Showa era, you will recognize that the people making this were fans of, or at the very least knew a lot about what went on in that world. Miki and Eri are, of course, based off the beauty pair, not just in being a duo of cute faces, but also in the designs of their leotards. The foxy ladies, Bloody Matsuki and Buster Horiguchi, are also based on famous female wrestlers, 
specifically the famous heel wrestlers of that era, Dump Masumoto and Bull Nakano. There's even a cameo appearance by famed musician slash wrestling commentator Demon Kogure, who's voicing himself in his appearance. All of these references to real life wrestling culture end up getting worked into a typical, yet still dependable, underdog narrative. The wannabes witness their colleagues, who are implied to be higher on the card, get beaten to mush by the foxy ladies, and are stuck with the knowledge that, with how the wrestling world works, they're gonna have to face each other in the ring one of these days. And if they want to beat them and avenge their fellow tag team friends, they need to train hard to get on their level. It is the underdog faces versus the champion heels, a wrestling gimmick that is older than Vince's taste and angles. Miki and Ari are practically the perfect baby faces, underdogs who everyone underestimates. They may not be the best of the best, but they still have the drive to reach that level. But they're also still relatable in that they are young women who, after a long day of training, want to sneak out and go eat cake at a fancy cafe. Don't we all? And their dorm room speaks a lot to their personalities as well, with it being covered in weight training equipment and Looney Tunes merch, speaking to their sporty innocence. And through Miki and Eri, the anime really goes to bat for women in wrestling, usually in the form of some one-dimensional asshole of a guy scoffing at the very idea of women wrestling. This usually ends in the wannabes answering them with some form of petty comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the foxy ladies are, in turn, the perfect heels. We don't know who they are outside the ring, but what we see of them in ring just gives us a good window of what kind of fighters they are. They are boastful, they constantly fight dirty. They attack the ring officials, they use weapons, up to including a blink and you miss it reference to Abdullah the Butcher. And even if they did make an effort to win clean, their overall fighting style is so brutal that it feels like they just want to draw as much blood from their opponents as possible. Hard way to the max. By the way, I forgot to mention that in the world of wannabes, wrestling is 100% real. This is less WWE and more MMA with no implication whatsoever that what is happening in ring is a work. Everything is a shoot. A decision that really helps raise the stakes for the wannabes because they are in real danger throughout the match, especially when it becomes clear that, even with all their special training, the foxy ladies still outrival them. But the wannabes still triumph over the foxy ladies, but just barely. In an 11th hour feat of strength, Miki and Eri are able to subdue them, but the match ends up in a draw. There's no sense of triumph in this moment, and the two ladies get the feeling that their special training didn't allow them to win the match honorably. It's a very bittersweet ending, an ending that comes when there's still 15 minutes left and then a 45 minute long- Okay, I buried the lead long enough and now it's time to come clean. Wannabes is not a straightforward wrestling anime. It's actually a wrestling anime with half the plot being given to a science fiction conspiracy plot. And it is... Dumb. So it turns out the Keto Corporation wanted to use women wrestlers as guinea pigs to test out their new equipment that gives people superhuman abilities. The Dream Girls were one of these test subjects, which is why after they failed their match against the Foxy Ladies, they were abducted by the company and became lab mice for their experiments. Naturally, after their bout against the Foxies, Miki and Eri interrogate their coach about their powers, and after getting their answers, immediately book it to Keto, where they have the climactic confrontation with their CEO. In defense of this plot thread, it's not a twist that comes out of nowhere. It's a plotline that runs in tandem with the wannabes training to beat the Foxies. There are plenty of scenes of the CEO plotting in his shady office and overseeing experimental tests that gives us foreshadowing of what kind of training the wannabes are receiving and why it's actually very sinister. However, this raises the tiny, itty bitty, inconsequential question of why the hell does this plot even need to be here in the first place? All this plot does is cause the anime to become more unfocused than it really should be. 
The plot should be about wrestlers wrestling other wrestlers. What does the story gain by having this bionic corporate conspiracy thriller plot line? A few extra fight scenes outside the ring? It's as if Hasegawa sat down the entire staff and said, Gentlemen, we cannot let this anime about women's wrestling just be about women's wrestling. We're more creative than that. Let's also make it a science fiction story. No one will see it coming. And how far exactly does this anime go into science fiction? Well, let's just say the Keto Corporation is actually the Umbrella Corporation. Wesker is a crazy man. Don't come this way! No! So this is how our wrestling anime ends, with our two heroines finding a gigantic mutant monster with freeway on-ramps for arms and a heart as black as coal. And trust me when I say that it is not as cool as I am making it out to be. As much as I've praised the layout and animation of the fight scenes in Wannabes, that praise only really accounts for the wrestling portions. That amount of detail is absent from this final confrontation. The animation and boarding just go back to being basic and functional at best. It really feels like they put all their chips on the wrestling scenes and put in the work to make those scenes look good, while this final confrontation was just treated like mandatory paperwork, just putting in the bare minimum to make it look serviceable. This extends to the writing because, at the very end, Miki and Eri are able to defeat the giant purple people eater, but not before Eri is hanging out of a window. Miki tries to rescue Eri, but she still ends up plummeting to certain doom. The police arrive at the disturbance, and it looks like this happy-go-lucky OVA about women's wrestling is gonna end on a huge bummer. But then we got the last scene of Miki and Eri reading the newspaper about how the CEO of Keto got arrested before going out to face the Voxy ladies again. What? How did she... Uh, when did she... Uh, how did Eri survive? There, there's a scene missing. There's a full-blown scene missing. You, you can't end a story like this. This is a cop-out. They just cheated us. This isn't fair. She didn't get out of the cock a duty car. And if you want to come at me with a death dream theory, don't. You're just making excuses for Suzuki throwing up his hands and hastily scribbling down an ending because he had a deadline to meet. With all that in mind, what is the final verdict on Wannabes? Well, I can't exactly hate this anime. It has all that indescribable 80s je ne sais quoi when I am seeking out these kinds of anime. Just pure 80s goofiness that's well designed and well animated for the most part and it really does do a good service to the sport it's betraying. But at the same time, that whole bolting on an unnecessary science fiction plot and a poorly written one at that makes this anime kind of hard to recommend. This is not one of those OVAs I would say that you should go to great lengths to find. In any case, it definitely feels like a Bubblegum Crisis episode, namely the first episode and how much of an unfocused mess that was. If there's anything Wannabes deserves to be remembered for, it's allowing Suzuki and company to better hone their storytelling craft and making sure that Tinsel City wasn't even sloppier than it already turned out to be. It's a pity that Wannabes turned out to be a footnote in anime history, but a footnote it shall remain. But if this anime is a jobber, at the very least it was a jobber that helped put a lot of major creatives over in a big way. But just like in wrestling, you gotta finish strong if you ever want to be seen as a champion in the eyes of fans.